The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable communications industry and your local cable company. Hi, I'm Reese Davis. ESPN is proud to present this commercial-free presentation of Sports Figures, where science and math meet sports. Today, BMX superstar Dave Mira crashes through the physics of collisions with our Greg Abbey. Yeah, listen, we're going to need an ambulance uh, to this location right oh. uh, Never mind. He's, he's fine. Oh! Oh! Ow! Ah. Uh, yeah, listen, this, this is me. We're going to really need an ambulance. Forget it, he's, yeah, I'm sorry, oh, bye-bye. I thought it was. Oh, that's gotta hurt. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, hi, it's me again. Listen, this time, I'm, I'm serious, we definitely need a name. He's getting up, I don't, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, okay, I, I won't watch anymore, I promise. Oh, I'm sorry, bye -bye. okay, bye-bye. Figures. Put your brain in the game. Riders crash so much they have different names for it. Uh, endo, beater, gravity check, lawn dart, dead sailor, and face plant. And whether these guys are in the vert, whether they're on a street course or doing dirt stunts, whether they're pro or amateur, riders crash. When you see somebody wipe out like that, your impulse is to dial 911. But these riders seem to walk away from crashes that should give them severe cranial disharmony. Uh, how is it possible? Are they superhuman? Well, the answer lies in another kind of impulse. Oh, oh, oh. whoa, that's going to leave a mark. Sure, they wear these pads and helmets, but can that really protect them in these major crashes? You know, if we look at the science of crashing, that may help you ride a little safer and uh, prevent a few broken bones. Oh, to help us take a look at beaters and endos, we've got BMX rider Dave Mira. Nicknamed Miracle Boy, Dave has won more X Games gold medals than any competitor in X Games history, including being the vert and freestyle champion. So. I think it's safe to say that Dave has had a few close encounters of the vert cup. So I imagine you crash the most when you're when you're trying out a new trick. Is that how it works? Oh, for sure. Learning, I mean, definitely there's crashing involved. So we go to the foam pits to avoid injury. Why do you work it in the foam pits instead of the vert? Why is that better? Well, because it's a lot softer, just like the pads and the foam inside the helmet. Okay, okay, what do you mean softer? Like, like you wouldn't, even if you had pads and a helmet on, you wouldn't, you wouldn't jump from here right down to the bottom. Well, actually we do, it's called a knee slide. A knee slide? Yeah. Can you, can you do one for us? Can I show you? Yeah, don't break anything. You just, whoa! Are you all right? Yeah. You fine? <laughs> he seems to be fine. So the vert is not soft at all, but Dave didn't break any bones. So how does that work? I guess there's more to soft than soft. Believe it or not, softness doesn't keep you from getting hurt. Time is what keeps you from breaking bones. That's right. Oh. Time. Pretty weird, huh? OK, so what can you guys tell me about the science of crashing? In science, a crash is called a collision. Yeah. Anytime two objects collide, it's called a collision. OK, and what are the two objects when you wipe out inside a vert? Well, there's you and the vert. Check this out. If I drop this watermelon from here down onto the concrete, there's going to be a collision, right? 
That's just about what you would expect. But if I dropped this watermelon into the water, also what you would expect. But what's going on? Why did one survive and the other go splat? The water is softer than the concrete. But what does softer mean in our collision? It took longer for the watermelon to stop in the water. Exactly. Time. Both watermelons had zero speed after they stopped. Now, the difference was how long it took to stop them. They both had the same speed because they were dropped from the same height. Yeah, they had the same speed in the same direction, down, so their velocities were the same. And they both weighed the same, so both their masses were equal. If their mass and velocity are the same, then their momentum would be the same. Whoa, whoa momentum? What's momentum? <laughs> Collisions are all about momentum. Any object that's moving has velocity, and if you have velocity, you have momentum. Momentum is a measure of motion, the quantity of motion, how much. Right now, I'm moving in a straight line, so I have linear momentum. Momentum is how we define collisions. We know intuitively that a heavy, slow-moving object is hard to stop. Oh. We also know intuitively that a small, light object is hard to stop if it's moving really fast. Uh, both have a lot of momentum, and that tells us something about momentum. That it has to do with the object's mass and velocity. Right. And by stopping it, you change its momentum. The equation to figure out linear momentum looks like this. Mass times velocity. How much something weighs times how fast it's going. It's as simple as that. Mass times velocity. Now, the only tricky thing to remember in this equation is P stands for momentum. Why P? I have no idea. But it's easy to remember if you switch them around. MV equals P. MVP. That's momentum. So Dave, momentum's super easy to figure out at the bottom of the vert, right? Well, P equals MV. If we had my velocity and my mass, we could find my momentum just by multiplying. Well, how much do you weigh? Uh, about 160. All right, well, 160 pounds is your weight, but your mass is 72.5 kilograms because we measure mass in grams. So uh, we're going to find your velocity next, OK? So we've hooked up a speedometer to your, to your bike. So I was going 30 miles an hour at the bottom of the vert ramp. But meters per second will be easier to work with. So you were going 13.4 meters per second. So 72.5 kilograms times 13.4 meters per second comes out to 971.5 kilos meters per second. Wow. <laughs> exactly. That's right, because momentum is measured in kilos meters per second. It's a number for momentum. But it's not momentum in a crash that hurts. No, 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 no. It's, it's not the momentum <laughs> itself. It's the change in momentum. <laughs> When a biker crashes, they experience a lot of force. Force is what hurts and uh, can break bones. Understanding how force works in a collision is the uh, key to not breaking bones. So it's how fast something changes its momentum, which determines how much force is in the collision. Right, and that's called an impulse. This right here is an equation for impulse. Basically, you can think of it as a number for pain. <laughs> we can figure out an object's change in momentum by subtracting its momentum before the collision from its momentum after the collision. Then we can figure out how long the change took, and that will tell us how much force it took. <clears throat> impulse works like this. If you're trying to catch a water balloon and you do this, you're changing the momentum of the balloon really fast, so you're applying a lot of force, a big impulse, so the balloon breaks. But if you do this, by slowing the balloon gradually, the time is greater, so force is less, less impulse, and the balloon doesn't break. If we put some numbers in, we can really see how much impulse changes because of time. Let's drop this bike two times, once from the top of the vert to the ground and once into the foam pits. We'll see what difference a little time makes. 
First, we figure out the bike's momentum. If its mass is 20 kilos and its velocity is 9 meters per second, when it hits, mass times velocity gives us 180 kilos meters per second. To find the change in momentum, we just subtract the momentum we started with from where it ended up. The bike is stopped after it hits the ground, so its momentum is zero. So the change in momentum is negative 180 kilograms meters per second. All we need to figure out now is time, how long it took for the bike to stop. Using high-speed video, we can count the number of frames to find the bike stopped in half a second. Plugging that into our equation, we quickly find that the bike experienced an impulse of negative 360 newtons when it hit the ground. 360 newtons is a lot of force. It's the same amount of force it would take me to hold up 80 pounds of weight. It's definitely enough uh, to crush some bones. So what if you were to hit the foam pits? What would the difference be? Let's figure it out. The bike's mass and velocity are the same, so the momentum is the same. Its final momentum is zero. The only difference is how long it takes to stop, time. Look, the impact with the foam takes 1.5 seconds for the bike to stop. That works out to an impulse of negative 120 newtons, only a third of the force of hitting the ground. Uh, uh. 120 newtons is about the same force you would need to hold up a little 25 pound weight. More time, less force. Less impulse, less pain. It's all about time. Riders don't usually go crashing straight down to the ground, and they don't have foam pits when they're competing. So let's see how impulse works in the real world of BMX stunts, and how these guys don't break bones every time they gravity check. OK, Dave, so. How can we use impulse not to get hurt? Well, if you take the helmets and pads, mm -hmm. the soft padding inside, the longer it takes to compress results in a lot less force when you do crash. This is your brain. This is your brain in a bucket. Oh, enough said. You see, the foam inside the helmet increases the time it takes for your head to stop. And the uh, hard outer shell increases it, too, by flexing when it hits, as well as spreading out the force of the impact. The shape of the vert also helps prevent injuries. Now, right now we're about 13 feet above the ground, not exactly a height you'd want to jump from, but go ahead, Dave. That's called a knee slide. See, the shape of the vert slows the change in your momentum, like a slide. So the vert itself takes some of the sting out of the wipeout. Using a knee slide, it takes over two seconds for the biker to come to a stop, but not completely. That's why helmets and pads are still important. So Dave, all this doesn't mean that BMX stunts aren't dangerous. So do you have any really good war stories, any, any serious injuries? I would say that uh, when I tore my spleen in half, you tore your spleen in half. In half. Okay. What do you do, though, to minimize that stuff? I mean, I guess you wear pads, obviously. Oh, well, pads are probably the first step to being safe. I mean, there's a lot of injuries that I've, you know, I slammed, I've crashed. Having pads on, you walk away from it. Right. So it just gives you more time to ride your bike. If you, if you don't wear pads, you slam. That's just another, another injury where you're going to be sitting at home watching TV. OK, so what do we learn? that when two objects come together, it's called a collision. And the collisions are all about momentum, how much you have and how fast it changes. Momentum is changed by a force over a period of time. Force times time is called impulse, and the equation is Ft equals P2 minus P1. The faster you change momentum, the greater the force. The slower you change momentum, the less the force. And that's how pads and helmets work. They increase the time it takes to change momentum. That's why it's so important to wear pads and helmets. Oh, it's not really the fall that gets you. It's that sudden stop at the end. Oh, oh. Well, that's it. We'd like to thank our bikers, Dave Mira, 
Dave Healy and Jimmy Hale. And of course, our students from Cooper City High School, Greg, Keith, Emma, and Kristen, for helping us out today on ESPN Sports Figures Crashing In. For some people, an organized sport like football or soccer is the way they like to play. But if that's not your thing, it doesn't mean you can't be active too. There are so many ways to play. You can do it alone or in a group, whatever. Here's the thing, just because you're on a skateboard doesn't mean you have to be Tony Hawk. Just because you have your bike out doesn't mean you have to be working aerials off the half pipe. It's not about competition, it's just about getting out and having some fun. Pick an activity that you enjoy doing, not something you just do for exercise. You don't need a team or a bunch of expensive equipment. All it takes is being active two to three times a week for half an hour to keep you looking and feeling great. But when you do it, do it right. Always wear your helmet and the proper pads. Team sports are great, but they're not the only thing. Remember, it doesn't matter what you play, you just play your way. I'm Reese Davis. We want to thank today's athletes for donating their time to put your brain in the game. Join us again for ESPN Sports Figures. ESPN Sports Figures is presented commercial free for educators to tape and use in the classroom. For a free teacher's curriculum, to order the Sports Figures series, or if you have questions or comments, visit our website at ESPNSportsFigures.com. You can also call 1-800-565-0452. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Sports, sports Figures, figures. Put, put your, your brain, brain in the, the game. game. The preceding program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable companies.